next we talk about the general characters of Pisces that is fish you know. Father of fisheries. Remember father of fisheries. A means A, A, P, M, T, Jipmer and M, Z point out is important here now. Father of fisheries is Peter Artedi. Fisheries which deals with the culturing aspect of the fish. So, father of fisheries is Peter RTD. Ichthyology is the study of fish and father of ichthyology is Aristotle. Father of ichthyology is Aristotle. The largest fish is Rhinodon or Rhinchodon. It is also called Rhinchodon. This is commonly called whale shark. Commonly called whale shark. The smallest fish is Mystic Thais Luzonensis. The smallest fish is Mystic Thais Luzonensis. Then fish are cold blooded that is spiculothermic and amniotes. Remember the students cyclostomes fish amphibia are called anamniotes in which fetal membranes are absent. Reptiles, birds and mammals are called amniotes where the embryo is covered by extra embryonic layers or fetal membranes like amnion, chorion, allantois and yolk sac. So, the fish are cold blooded and anamniotes. In fish, locomotion takes place by fins you know. The fins are categorized into median fins and paired fins. Pectoral and pelvic fins are considered as paired fins you now. The unpaired fins are also known as median fins, dorsal, caudal, anal fins are called median fins or unpaired fins. Now the caudal fin acts as a rudder, helps in changing direction of the body. Uh, while swimming. Then on the base of structure and internal organization, caudal fin is again divided into different types. Here the caudal fin has a longer dorsal lobe called epicardal lobe and a ventral small lobe called hypocardal lobe. Dorsal longer epicardal lobe and ventral smaller hypocardal lobe. The vertebral column is curved upwards extends up to tip of the epicardal lobe. Vertebral column is curved upwards extends up to tip of the epicardal lobe. So, this fin is externally and internally asymmetrical. This kind of caudal fin is called heterocircle caudal fin. This kind of caudal fin is called heterocircle where the epicardal lobe is much longer than hypocardal lobe. Vertebral column is curved upwards, extends up to tip of the epicardal lobe and this is called heterocircle caudal fin. Heterocircle caudal fin is present in most of the chondric thighs that is all cartilaginous fish. In fact, all cartilage fish are characterized by the presence of epicarda, I mean heterocircle caudal fin which is asymmetrical both externally and internally. If the caudal fin has got equal epicardal and hypocardal lobes, equal epicardal and hypocardal lobes, VC is slightly curved at the tip. 
vertebral column is slightly curved at the tip. It is called homo circle. Homo circle. Epicardial and hypocardial lobes are equal. BC is slightly curved at the tip. Homo circle is externally symmetrical, internally asymmetrical. And this kind of caudal fin is present in teleosti. In all teleosti bony fish, homo circle caudal fin is present. The caudal fin is lobed or non lobed. It may be sometimes lobed or non lobed here now. But we see that is vertebral column extends up to base of the caudal fin. Vertebral column does not extend up to the tip, it extends only up to caudal peduncle or base of the caudal fin. This kind of caudal fin is called diffy circle. This kind of caudal fin is called diffy circle. Diffy circle caudal fin is present in Latimeria, which is referred to as living fossil of fish and in all dipnoi. Dipnoi also, diffy circle caudal lungfish called dipnoi also, diffy circle caudal fin is present. This type of caudal fin here now, hypocardal lobe, is much longer than epicardal lobe. Vertebral column is curved downwards, extends up to vertebral column is curved downwards, extends up to the tip of the hypocardal lobe. This kind of inverted heterocircle caudal fin is called hypocircle caudal fin. Hypocircle caudal fin, it is present in certain extinct agnathans. Extinct Agnathan, this kind of caudal fin is present. Then there is another type of caudal fin. The caudal fin is unlobed. Caudal fin is unlobed like diffy circle or maybe lobed here now. Diffy circle it may be lobed or unlobed whereas in this type caudal fin is non-lobed here now. And we see that is vertebral column extends up to tip of the vertebral column extends up to tip of the caudal fin. This kind of caudal fin is called protocircle. Protocircle caudal fin, I have already made a mention here now, it is present in amphioxus. Amphioxus or branchiostoma that belongs to cephalocardata has protocircle caudal fin, protocircle type of caudal fin. If the caudal fin is truncated, Like this truncated caudal fin is present, it is called Zephyro circle. Truncated caudal fin is called Zephyro circle caudal fin. It is present in seahorse or hippocampus. Seahorse or hippocampus, Zephyro circle caudal fin is present. Like that, on the basis of structure, caudal fin is divided into as many as six types. The most common types of caudal fins are heterocircle found in chondrichthyes and homocircle found in all teleostean bony fish. The exoskeleton in fish is in the form of scales and some of them in the form of bony dermal plates called scutes are present. The exoskeleton of fish differs from rest of the vertebrates being mesodermal in origin mesodermal in origin. In all other vertebrates like reptiles, birds and mammals, scales are derivatives of ectoderm or epidermis whereas in fish you now they are derivatives of mesoderm or dermis. The most common type of scales are placoid scales you now. Placoid scales are found in chondrichthyes. Cartilage fish or chondrichthyes you now, placoid scales are present. Placoid scales are also called dermal denticles. They are also called dermal denticles. Each placoid scale has a tri a structure called basilar plate. This basilar plate is deposited with the 
pulp cavity and this basilar plate bears a naked tridentate spine. This basilar plate remains embedded in the skin, remains embedded in the skin. The naked part of the scale is called tridentate spine which is internally provided with dentine and canaliculi. All these structures which I am drawing here, they are canaliculi and it is made up of dentine. And it is covered by an enamel like sheath. Covered by an enamel like sheath called vitrodentine. So, this kind of scales are present in chondrichthyes, all, all chondrichthyes, placoid scales. Then these scales present in bony fish here now. In bony fish, cycloid, tenoid, ganoid and cosmoid scales are present. The scales present in Bony fish are cycloid, tenoid, ganoid and cosmoid scales are present. The most common type among these are cycloid and tenoid. The cosmoid scales are present in extinct, certain extinct bony fish you know? and the ganoid scales are also called rhomboid scales. Ganoid scales are also called rhomboid scales. Then some of the fish, you know, scales are entirely absent. They have got a naked body like most of the catfish, you know. All the catfish, in fact, you would say in all catfish, scales are absent. The body is naked. If we look into the endoskeleton of the fish, you know, skull skull is monocondylic. In fish, skull is monocondylic and the sternum is absent, sternum is absent but however, ribs and girdles are present, ribs and girdles are present and vertebrae are Amphicelous vertebrae are amphicelous, and if you observe the important modifications in digestive system, important modifications if you observe in digestive system here now in fish, teeth are polyphiodont, acrodont, and homodont. Teeth are polyphiodont, acrodont, and homodont. In cartilage fish and certain bony fish, you know, intestine has a scroll valve or spiral valve. Intestine has scroll valve or spiral valve that increases the area of absorption. In cartilage fish, elementary canal opens outside through cloaca. Elementary canal opens outside through cloaca. If you observe the modifications in the respiratory system here now, in cartilage fish, 5 to 7 pairs of gills are present. 5 to 7 pairs of gills are present and all the gills are naked and the gill lamellae are lamelliform. Lamelliform type of gill lamellae are present, that is plate like gills are present. 5 to 7 pairs of gills are present, all gills are naked without operculum. Without operculum. A shark called 
hexanchus he is with six pairs of gills another shark called heptanchus he is with seven pairs of gills in all cartilage fish you now the operculum is absent but however there is a shark called chlamydocelatus chlamydocelatus is the only shark with a poorly developed operculum poorly developed operculum and in cartilage fish air bladder and accessory respiratory organs are absent air bladder and axillary respiratory organs are absent in cartilage fish in bony fish four pairs of gills are present four pairs of gills are present the gill lamellae are filiform filiform type of gill lamellae are present four types of gills are present the gill lamellae are filiform and gills are covered by operculum gills are covered by operculum in all bony fish you now air bladder is present air bladder is of helping in respiration it acts as hydrostatic organ hydrostatic organ but however in some bony fish air bladder is modified into lung like in all dipnoians air bladder is modified into lung even in chondrosti also air bladder is modified into a lung like structure if air bladder opens into the pharynx through a duct that is called ductus pneumaticus it is called physostomy type of air bladder if air bladder opens into the pharynx through a duct if air bladder doesn't open into the pharynx if it is blind it is called physoclisty so there are two types of air bladder physostomy type or physoclisty type then apart from this some of the bony fish besides air bladder they have got accessory respiratory organs accessory respiratory organs which enable them to gulp in atmospheric air when they are out of water or when the water level decreases the the bony fish with axillary respiratory organs are called air breathing fish or they are also called live fish air breathing fish or live fish apart from this in cartilage fish you now spiracle is present besides lungs you now besides uh, gills spiracle is present in cartilage fish and in certain bony fish but however in teleostean fish you now spiracle is absent in all fish you now heart is two chambered with the with an auricle a ventricle separated from each other by inter auricular ventricular septum or valve this is inter auriculo ventricular valve and heart collects impure blood from different parts of the body by sinus venosus impure blood from sinus venosa flows into auricle from auricle to ventricle from ventricle it flows into conus arteriosus or bulbus arteriosus the bulbus arteriosus or conus supplies blood to gills for oxygenation like in all cartilage fish conus arteriosus is present but in all bony fish bulbus arteriosus is present so this conus or bulbus supplies impure blood to gills for oxygenation as impure blood flows to the heart the heart of fish is called venous heart 
or it is also called brinkial heart brinkial heart as the gills bring about oxygenation of blood so in cyclostomes and fish heart is called venous heart only impure blood flows to the heart it is also called brinkial heart because gills bring about oxygenation of blood fish have both rps that is renal portal system and hepatic portal system in all fish you now hemoglobin is accommodated within the rbcs hemoglobin is accommodated within the rbcs there are some fish called ice fish rbcs are absent and hemoglobin is dissolved in the plasma now in this examples for this are chamsocephalus pseudocanicus and chinocephalus chinocephalus pseudocanicus and chamsocephalus are commonly called ice fish in which rbcs are absent hemoglobin is dissolved in the plasma and all these fish live in torrential waters so in order to carry more amount of oxygen here now hemoglobin is dissolved in blood plasma instead of being accommodated in rbcs